But say neighbor, oh neighbor, you are not defeated. Yeah, you are not defeated. Church, one of the most challenging experiences to deal with is defeat. When you work hard to accomplish something and life keeps throwing curveballs your way. When you are focused on accomplishing your goals and life keeps on causing you to face what you didn't expect to face. When you, when you are headed to the finish line and life knocks you down. Now we bring some things on ourselves for, for not obeying God and doing things God's way. Make no mistake about it, in order to do well in this life, you need to obey God. In order for you to enjoy what God ordained for you, you need to obey God. In order to enjoy the life Christ died for you to have, you need to obey God. In order to enjoy God's goodness and grace and favor and blessing and forgiveness, power and presence, you must obey God. For Jesus said in John 14, 23, that if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So if we love the Lord, we will obey his word. And Jesus said that the father will not only love us, but he will, he and the Lord Jesus would come and make their abode with us. Come and take up residence in our lives. Come and live in us. How many know that you don't get to ignore God and do whatever you want to do and then expect God to just come and bless it. You don't get to live however you want to live and then expect God to ignore the sin and bless you anyway. No, if you want the blessings of God, if you want the favor of God, if you want the presence of God in your life, we have to learn to obey God. Somebody say obey God. Why? Because God never promised to bless bless your plan God blesses his plan that we will obey and follow God never promised that your plan would work God promised to bless you as you work in his plan why because a blessed man according to Psalms 1 a blessed person doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly doesn't stand in the way of sinners doesn't sit in the seat of the scoffer but delight in the law in the word of God in the law of the Lord day and night and that person shall be like a tree planted by the lures of water and that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth whatsoever whatsoever he doeth shall prosper why because he or she is obeying God meditating on his word and the Lord is with him how many know the Lord can be with him yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But every now and then, life may cause you to hit a valley that will cause you to feel defeated. Every now and then, you may bump into a season in your life when, just, when stuff just ain't going right. Every now and then, you may experience a loss in your life that will shake you and try to break you. But God sent me here to tell you this Easter Sunday morning that you are not defeated. Why? Because in our text we find a heartbroken Mary Magdalene and the other Mary going to the sepulcher or the tomb where Jesus lay. Their teacher had been crucified. Their leader had been executed. Their master had been murdered. How would you feel if your leader was executed? He was their hope and their hope was gone. He was their inspiration and their inspiration was gone. And they came to the tomb of Jesus to be close to him, to the one they loved so dear. They heard him preach. They heard him teach. They saw him heal. They saw him do miracles but now their hope was locked up in a
a tomb. So they came to the tomb to pay homage and pay respect to their leader that they loved. But as they approached the tomb, there was a great earthquake. And the Lord had told me to tell somebody, don't let your earthquakes fool you. Sometimes when you are already going through tough times, something else might happen. These women had lost their leader and were on their way to pay homage to him and th there was a great earthquake. Uh, they, had, they could have assumed that bad had gotten worse. They could have assumed that the earthquake was going to consume their lives. But, but church, when we are going through storms of life, we have to learn how to deal with some earthquakes. When everything in your life is shaken, when everything in your world is shaking, friends are shaking, finances are shaking, jobs shaking, family members shaking, friends, fr friendships shaking, health getting shaken, everything shaking, and we have to learn that God allows us to experience some of life's earthquakes sometimes for you to wake up and see what the Lord has done. Why? Because the earthquake was simple. It was simply God's angel descending from heaven to roll away the stone from the door of the tomb. So the women, the disciples, and everybody could know what the Lord had done. The women were discouraged. They were grieving, but God used an earthquake. I say God used an earthquake. I say God used an earthquake to show the women what the Lord had done. God used an earthquake to show the women that Christ had risen. For if the angel had not used the earthquake to roll away the stone, they would not have been able to see for themselves that Jesus was not there. If the angel had not used the earthquake to remove the storm, nobody would have been able to see an empty tomb. Jesus was already gone. He was already risen. So the stone wasn't rolled away so that Jesus could get out. The stone was rolled away so, so we could get in to see that he wasn't there. He was already in, in a, he was already up but the stone was rolled away so the women and the disciples could get in there to find out he was gone. And God used an earthquake to inform them what the Lord had done and church sometimes God will use some earthquakes in your life to show you what he's already done. You didn't know how good the Lord had been to you until you survived an earthquake. You didn't know how strong you were until you experienced an earthquake. You didn't know how strong your marriage was until y'all went through some earthquakes. You didn't know how, how much people loved you until you went through a few earthquakes. Sometimes God allows life earthquakes to shake us up and shake us up and shake us up and show us what God has already done. God allows some life earthquake to shake us up to show us what we really got sometimes God allows life earthquake to shake us up to show you how strong you really are so don't let the earthquake fool you don't let the shake up fool you because when your life is experiencing an earthquake God can show you some things God can show you some stuff these women felt defeated they felt discouraged. They were mourning the loss of their leader. But God sent an angel and an earthquake to let them in the tomb to show them what the Lord had done. And sometimes God will use the earthquake in your life to shake some stuff up, roll away the stone so you can see what the Lord is doing in your life. So, when, so what we have to do is learn how to endure the earthquake. <laughs> Endure the earthquake. It won't last long. Endure the earthquake. God is up to something. Endure the earthquake. God is doing something in your life. Endure the earthquake. God is showing you something. Endure the earthquake. God has some things to 
expose, endure the earthquake. God has some people to expose. Why? Because if they can leave you in the midst of an earthquake, if they can leave you when your life is shaken, if they can leave you in the midst of that problem, they won't ordain to be with you anyway. Because they, when God sends you somebody, when God gives you somebody, I say when God sends somebody in your life, when God sends you a blessing, they can stand with you on the mountain. They can stand with you in the valley. They can stand with you through the storm. They can stand with you through the rain. They can stand with you through your sickness. They can stand with you through your pain. They were designed to stand with you in the midst of your earthquake. Because you're going to have some earthquakes. Loved ones die. Shake up your whole world. That's an earthquake. Lose your job. You don't know what you're going to do. That's an earthquake. Lose your home. You don't know where you're going to live. That's an earthquake. Something happened with your health. You don't know what's going to happen. That's an earthquake. And I don't care how pretty you are or how handsome you are. You better have the Lord on your side. You better have somebody who's concerned about your heart. God can use some earthquakes to show you what you really got. Because everybody hanging with you ain't that for the earthquake. Let me say that one more again. Everybody hanging with you ain't there for the earthquake. Some people there for the peanuts and the ice cream and the fried chicken and a tater salad. But as soon as a tater salad dry up and the chicken dry up and the peanuts dry up and your checkbook dry up, they will dry up because they want sin to be with you through your earthquake. See, you gotta learn how to thank God for some earthquakes. Don't you know some of your best friends you didn't even know was your best friend? You didn't even know it. You found out because when you was going through when other folk that you thought was all that didn't show up, they showed up. How many know God can bless you in the midst of your earthquake? Let me, oh, bless the Lord. Yeah, 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 you see? How many know talk is still cheap? But an earthquake will expose the who's who. The who's who in your life. So don't let the earthquake fool you. The women, they felt defeated. And sometime in life, you may feel defeated. But God sent an earthquake to show them that what God had already done. For the Lord, the angel rolled back the stone and sat on it. How many know that there are, that that no stone is no stone in your life is too big for God to roll away? There's no stone in your life too big that God can't. your best needs to be rolled away. Anything keeping you from trusting God and moving forward in your life needs to be rolled away. Lord, roll it away. Lord, roll it away. Roll my stone away. Roll my stone away. It's blocking my view. 
it's blocking my vision. It's blocking my progress. It's blocking my purpose. It's blocking my provision. Lord, roll my stone. Roll away. Somebody shout, Lord, roll my stone. Go away. Lord, roll my soul. Go away. The, 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 these women felt defeated. But when they got to the tomb, the stone was rolled away. And the angel spoke up and said, Fear not, or don't fear. For I know, I know why you're here. How many know he know why we're here? I know why you're here. I know that ye see Jesus, which was crucified. But I got something to tell you. He is not here. For he is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Just as he said, just as he said, don't you remember? Just as he said, come on, come on, come on in here, come on in here, come in here and see the place where he was. Come on in here and see the place that he lay. Now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And the Bible said they departed quickly from the sepulchre with reverence and great joy and ran and told the disciples. In other words, let me help you. They came to the tomb one way, but they left another way. They came to the tomb hurting, defeated, discouraged, grieving, and mourning, but left the tomb happy, reverencing God, excited, and joyful. They came to the tomb walking in sorrow. But when they left that tomb, they were running with joy. Why? Because even though they felt, they felt defeated, they were not defeated. And God told me to tell you, don't let your feelings fool you. Don't let your feelings fool you. Just because you feel defeated doesn't mean you are defeated. The women felt defeated because they thought Jesus was dead. But while they were thinking Jesus was dead, he was up from the grave. And as soon as the truth come out, as soon as they found out that the truth was, they got a pep in their step, some joy in their heart, a song in their lips. Why? Because they weren't the only ones who left the tomb a different way. Because Jesus came to the tomb beaten. He came to the tomb with wraps all on his body. He came as they put nails in his hand. He came to the tomb as they put nails in his feet. He came to the tomb after he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He came to the tomb after he said, Father, unto thy hand I commend my spirit. Jesus came to the tomb after he suffered, bled, and died. 
he came to the tomb looking dead and defeated. He came to the tomb looking like the biggest loser. He came to the tomb a lifeless corpse on Friday. But early, 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 oh early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. The lifeless corpse was a commanding Christ. The beaten prisoner was a risen savior. And the crucified king of the Jews got up king of kings and lord of lords. That's my king. And no matter what you're going through, you are not defeated. Why? Because if you're saved, say, somebody say, if you're saved. If you have the spirit of God abiding on the inside of you, that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead can raise you up out of anything. That same spirit that raised up Jesus from his tomb can raise you up out of your tomb. That tomb of oppression, that tomb of poverty, that tomb of anger, that tomb of neglect, that tomb of unforgiveness. Come out of there. You don't belong in that tomb. Come out of that tomb. You are a child of the Most High God. Come out of depression. You don't belong in there. Come out of poverty. You don't belong in there. Come out of addiction. You don't belong in there. Come out of pornography. You don't belong in there. Come out of sexual sin. You don't belong in there. If they not your husband, and they not your wife, you don't have no business laying with them. Come on out of there. Because Jesus got up so you could get up. Jesus got up to give us power to get up. I don't care what is going on. Child of God, you are not defeated. Get up. Get up. Get up. Tell your neighbor, get up. Get up. Keep fighting. Get up. Keep pressing. Get up. Keep serving. Get up. When it looks like you can't do it no more. When it looks like it's all over. God will breathe in you the breath of life and cause you to get up. Remind me. It kind of reminds me. It kind of reminds me of the of the Rocky series. Miguel, you remember Rocky? Rocky Balboa. No make no difference which opponent he had. Whether he was fighting Apollo Creed. Whether he was fighting a club of lane, y'all remember Mr. T, don't you? Or whether he was fighting that big Russian, Alvin Dragoff. Or he was fighting Tommy Gunn. Whenever Rocky had gone as far as he could go, whenever Rocky had taken as much as he could take, something on the inside would remind him of who he was. Something on the inside will remind him of the people who loved him. Something on the inside would flash up and he would see some things. And something on the inside would tell him to get up. Get up. Get up. And God told me to tell somebody, you are not defeated. I don't care what opponent you are facing. I don't care what your opponent is in your life. The devil is a lie. I don't care how bad it may look. You are not defeated. Get up. Get up. 
And if you get up, God will raise you. If you get up, God will fight your battle. If you get up, God will see you through. If you get up, God will work it for your good. Is there anybody in the building that is honest enough to say, I know what it feels like to feel defeated. I know what it feels like to think you've done all you can. I know what it feels like to be tired and want to say, Y'all can have it. But in the midst of me saying, y'all can have it. Something on the inside saying, get up, get up, get up, man of God. Get up, woman of God. The best is yet to come. Come on, give God praise. The only time The only time you defeat is when you quit The Bible says a righteous man falling down seven times <laughs> he, he didn't say He said a righteous man Falling down Not one See, we, some of us give up on people and they mess up one time. Not two. People five. He said seven times. Then he says, and get it back up again. So it don't matter. You may feel like you defeated. And you may have lost some stuff in your life. But I want you to know, God said, you are not defeated unless you quit. Keep on fighting. Keep on pressing. And God will meet you in the midst of your storm. Come on, give God praise. Tell your neighbor, you're not defeated. I know that course is hard. I know that class is rough. I know that professor may be getting on your nerves. But it ain't for them to finish, it's for you to finish. And you can roll your eyes and neck in your head, but you still need that grade. Hello. Hello. And I know people on your job may get on your nerves. your emotion cause you to make I'm going to say it this way unintelligent decisions now there's some other things I could have said some stuff just oop it no you can't let your emotion cause see you can't come home and tell your children I, I I, I, I just tired. I just was tired. <laughs> y'all, I don't know what y'all, I don't know what y'all gonna eat, but I'm just tired. <laughs> Who don't have bad days? Everybody had him. You ain't above nobody else. You got good days and you got tough days. I got good days, guys. And we all the same boat. But it ain't about how you feel. It's about what God said. God said if you walk with me, you the head and not the tail. Above and not. How many know if you just walk with God, a whole lot of stuff we go through, we would have to go through no how. There may be somebody here today unsaved, unchurched. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't asked him to forgive you, because see, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Your opinion don't matter. 
your opinion don't matter. And don't let somebody just as lost as you are help you go to hell with them. We, we listen to folk, they don't know no more than you know. They don't know nothing about the Bible just like you don't know nothing about now. But they go to church. They could have gone to church all their life and still not know no more than you know. But at the end of the day, when you close your eyes, you got to stand before God for yourself. And if you've never asked the Lord to forgive you for the sin in your life, if you never asked God to forgive you for the stuff you've done, if you've not made a commitment to God to live right and live holy before him, guess what? When you close your eyes, hell is your home. But we serve a risen Savior that all we've got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me for what I've done. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Save you. Save me. And if you call the name of the Lord, he'll save you. If you're here today, want to give your life to Jesus Christ, why don't you come meet me at the altar? Let's all stand together. If you're here today, unsaved, unchurched, come on, give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. You've won the victory. Hallelujah. Grab somebody's hand right where you are.